Hello everybody, I'm Peter, Peter Beresford from Shaping Our Lives. This is the first of a series of short videos from Shaping Our Lives. We are the independent national disabled peoples and service user organisation and network. And our aim, we exist to make it more possible for people as service users to have more say in their life and more control over the support that they need. We've been going for a long time now and have learned a lot about what works to involve people equally and fully. But hey, if you're a policy maker, a service provider, politician or other powerful person, well, you've got pressures on you to ensure user involvement. Yeah, that's right. But you may not really have time or indeed inclination to do it. We know that since we see so many examples of bad involvement. So why not borrow from our how not to do user involvement checklist? Our toolkit, our filmic app. If you really want to make sure that the doors stay closed, the views you don't want to hear are kept out, even though you can say you are involving people 100% when you get asked. So let's go. And can I tell you, this is based on a truly enormous amount of evidence. We hear more about bad user involvement every single day from service users, locally, nationally, globally. So here are the things to do if you really do want it, that people do not get involved. Here's our checklist on how not to do user involvement. Number one. Make it a matter of big formal meetings at difficult times. For example, if you're a carer or you've got children to look after or a job or shift work. Make it an occasion where people have to do a lot of talking if they get involved or have to fill in forms, write things and do questionnaires. Best of all, make sure that it feels uncomfortable, unfamiliar, boring and difficult so people think I might make a fool of myself if I come or I don't fancy doing that again. Most of all don't offer pleasant refreshments at any events you organise. This could give people the wrong idea that they are valued and respected and some effort been put into it. Don't pay any attention please to issues of access where that is physical or environmental access or its communication access or cultural access don't look into that deeply don't feel you have to look beyond the usual suspects the people with the confidence determination and assertiveness and skills to respond to invitations when you've cold called on the other hand if you are a bit worried that the usual suspects that kind of confident person might say some difficult or uncomfortable things, then stress that they are really unrepresentative and try and keep them out. Try and use as much jargon and as many acronyms, that's initials to the rest of us, as possible in all written, verbal and other communication. If this doesn't mystify, confuse and humiliate people, then what will? Make sure that you have decided what you want to do, your plan, you know what it is, before you try and involve people. That way they really can't upset the apple car. Make sure it's a matter of people having to come to you if it's consultation and involvement, rather than you reaching out to them. That should discourage quite a few. People want to get involved to make things better for others. That's the evidence. So try and make sure that nothing comes out of the initiatives you take. If that doesn't kill interest, nothing will. We know that some people are less likely than others to get involved. For example, in relation to equality issues, in relation to ethnicity, people from black and minority ethnic communities, in relation to gender, sexuality, age, class, disability, culture, belief, and so on. Think about why. There's something to build on here to make sure you can extend that kind of exclusion to even more people. 
Try not to involve any service users or other local people or their groups, their self-run groups, their user-led organisations in shaping how you try to involve people. That way you will not be encumbered, limited by all their very relevant but time-consuming knowledge and expertise which can sometimes divert you from essential goals like tokenism and just involving people to rubber stamp what you've already decided. Oh and finally, don't provide any feedback about what happened as a result of people getting involved, of, it, of seeking that involvement and getting them to respond. Then, even if you've done something useful, they won't know, so will feel that it's been a complete waste of time and won't trouble you again. Now, of course, this is only an initial list. We've only a couple of minutes here. Hopefully you can add to it. But I think it's likely to be quite helpful since I've already seen so many efforts to involve people that appear to have learned a lot from just such guidance, who followed it to the letter, sometimes even beyond. So good involvement, everyone, everyone out there. And remember, the golden rule, if you're engaging a wide and large number of people on equal terms, then you really have got to be doing something wrong. Thanks very much, everybody. Good hunting. Hope you don't find very much. Bye.